Hell's Kitchen is a place of growth, of encouragement even. Contestants experimenting with food? Sure, why not? But some contestants have taken this grace to its logical extreme and left a trail of misery in their wake. And I can't think of a better place to start than here. Hell's Kitchen is all about revolutionizing the culinary industry. But did you know there are certain dishes that are banned from ever being made on the show? Well, this contestant decided to fool around a little bit and send one of them to the past. <laughs> what could go wrong, right? The Hell's Kitchen Pantry offers its chefs a wide range of ingredients to help them whip up some next-level dishes. But as a rule, anything potentially lethal is banned from use on the show. I mean, I sure hope so. Watching a contestant screw up chicken is one thing, but fugu? Count me out. But you'd be astonished to hear just how many times the health and safety standards were violated by contestants that have appeared on the show. Let's start with Brendan's second service in season 9. The trouble began when communication breakdowns between Brendan and Chino resulted in a screwed up risotto not once, but twice. Chino reminds me of a chipmunk on meth. Creative, huh? But this little incident earned Brandon a not-so-flattering nickname, the Prince of Lies. So what happened is, Brendan fired a sea bass for an upcoming table while the rest of the kitchen wasn't prepared. This mistake got Ramsay involved, who emphasized the need for clear communication and precision in timing during the service. Brendan was then instructed to prepare another sea bass to replace the one that had been sent in too early. Unfortunately, the situation took a turn for the worse when Ramsay grew suspicious of what Brendan was up to. Ramsay had a feeling Brendan had sent up the sea bass that had been cooked 10 minutes prior, which would have been in blatant violation of his commitment to freshness and quality. But Brendan vehemently denied it, claiming that he had started a fresh sea bass. Chef, I can't find it. However, Ramsay was still skeptical, prompting him to challenge Brendan to produce the old sea bass. Unbelievable! When he returned empty handed and admitted that he couldn't find it, Ramsay's tone grew deadly serious. He even went as far as threatening him to really drive the point home. Kitchen, I'm going to ask you one more time to tell me the truth. Is that the bass from 10 minutes ago, or is that a fresh one you've cooked? Because I'm going to turn this fing kitchen upside down. Brendan's moment of truth came when Ramsay asked him for a second time whether or not the old sea bass had been sent out. And he finally admitted to the deception. Chef, yes. The admission came too little too late, with his brief lapse in honesty and integrity putting the reputation of Hell's Kitchen itself on the line. The only thing bigger than Brendan's ego are the lies that he tells, and I can't have that in Hell's Kitchen. Amen. Next up in season 14, Brett started the fourth night on the appetizer station alongside Brendan. When Brendan made a little slip up by serving too little risotto, Brett jumped into action and took over for him. The dude was willing to step up when things got tough, which, despite what's coming up, I still gotta respect him for. I got this. While Brett was working on making a fresh batch of risotto, he thought he was nailing it. He felt pretty confident about the refire, but Ramsey spotted a big issue. Stop! Come here! Bring that pan and bring that pan here. Still wondering what the real issue was? Well, let me illuminate that for ya. Three, four minutes ago, dumped into the fresh one. The chef what have in up. the f*** are we doing? You see, fresh is Ramsey's favorite F word. I know, I know, it's hard for me to believe too. And this next contestant decided to serve him just the opposite. In season three, Joanna had a crucial role at the appetizer station. It was her third and final service, and she was looking to take the lead with her risotto. But here's where things started to go wrong. Her first batch of risotto turned out way too salty. It's soft, it's salty, yes, and it's just, it's crap. This mistake forced the whole team to start over, which wasn't a good look for any of them, least of all Joanna. And the problems didn't stop there. When she sent up the refired order, it had to be redone for the third time because Bonnie's scallops were undercooked. And then, the biggest shocker of the night, Ramsay caught wind of something terrible. Smell that, hey you, don't you f***ing dare, come here you, hello. Oh, God. And, well, I think you already have a fair idea of what happened. Can you not smell that? 
The crap is off. It's f***ing rancid. I shouldn't need to tell you how dangerous using spoiled ingredients can be, and Ramsay knew it all too well himself, since he didn't skip a beat before berating her. How can you do that? I didn't smell the crap. Ramsay looked genuinely terrified. But the bigger question is, what was a rotten crab doing in the kitchen in the first place? Anyway, Jen performed equally bad that night. She was initially assigned to the meat station, but when things got chaotic, Ramsay moved her and Julia to the appetizer station after Joanna's crab incident. Julia, yes, take chef. over. Yes, chef. The frustration was getting real, so Jen made the decision to throw away some cooked spaghetti that she thought wasn't needed. I mean, excellent judgment. But Ramsay suddenly called for spaghetti on the next order, and this caught Jen off guard. Guess what she did? When I decided to retrieve the spaghetti from the top of the garbage and washed it. 212 kills the bacteria, and then I decided to serve it. Yeah, your eyes aren't deceiving you. That actually happened. Thankfully, Julia stepped in and convinced her not to serve it because, well, of course she freaking shouldn't do that. It was in the garbage. Like, just think about that for a second. But I'm glad she had the rest of the contestants there to hold her accountable. If that had been her own restaurant, who knows what she would have gotten away with. Speaking of getting away with things, Barrett was in charge of the fish station for season 11's seventh service. And you won't believe what he did. You see, Barrett had experience cooking fish, so the night should have been a cakewalk for him, right? Well, turns out, Barrett sent out some halibut to the pass, meant for a group of elderly women. But there was something wrong with it. The paper. You got the parchment on it, man? What, you trying to kill people? By the time you swallow it, it's too late. You're on the floor with John Philippe doing CPR on you. Huh. Yeesh. Sometime later in the family dinner service, he was back at it again. First, when he sliced some lamb for an order, it ended up being undercooked. Barrett soon came up with a solution and put it back in the oven for an additional 30 seconds, because of course that was gonna fix it. Maybe I'm not searing it long enough. Maybe I'm not leaving it in the oven long enough. Maybe my oven temperature's too low. Whatever it is, I gotta figure it out and figure it out fast. Or maybe production sabotage you. If you watch my video on the dark truth of Hell's Kitchen, you know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't, go check it out right now and get caught up. Anyway, sabotage or not, instead of making sure the lamb was properly cooked, Barrett decided to send it out, despite knowing it was still raw. This was a significant mistake, because serving undercooked meat can be really dangerous. I mean, foodborne illnesses can be really bad. Barrett, if you knew it was raw, why'd you bring it up to me? I'm sorry, chef. Get it in the oven! Okay. Ramsey rightfully criticized him for the error. After receiving motivation from his teammates, Barrett made a second attempt, which was finally accepted. However, the black mark he got from this incident wasn't going to be forgotten so quickly. Then, things took another dangerous turn when Barrett presented his chicken dish. You can probably see where this is going. He was unsure if it was cooked properly, so he sought a second opinion from John. John told him that it wouldn't be accepted, plain and simple, which should have indicated to him that it was probably undercooked. Barry, are you serious? That shit shouldn't go in the window. No way in hell, man. Ramsey pushed Barrett to move faster while he put the chicken back in the oven. And while undercooked lamb is one thing, there's a reason people don't serve chicken medium rare like steak. Chicken is often loaded with a killer bacteria, salmonella, throughout the meat, and it can only be neutralized by cooking it to the right temperature. Safe to say, he needed to fix the problem, and fast. Unfortunately, even with help from the red team, when Barrett sent out the chicken, it was still raw. And sadly, it was walking straight towards Sue Chef James's wife. Chef James's wife is pregnant. Oh my gosh. He put not only her, but also her unborn baby at risk. Raw fish, people can survive, undercooked meat, you can cook it more, like it's not gonna kill you. Fucking raw chicken will fucking kill you. But you know, this reminds me of what Brett did during his time on the show. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then make sure to watch my video on the 10 worst chefs on Hell's Kitchen. Trust me, it's a story you're not gonna wanna miss. So we just went over things that were raw and rotten. And it shouldn't come as a surprise, but you are absolutely banned from using pre-made, canned, or frozen food in Ramsey's kitchen. We're 22 seasons in, and you would think contestants would have figured this out by now, but it always keeps getting worse. Like this time in season 9. 
you open a can of pineapple and you stick it on top of a chicken. Limited time today. Limited time. And I can't not mention the time Demir presented store-bought linguine in the latest season. I honestly wonder why chefs keep making this mistake time and time again, despite knowing how Ramsay feels about canned and frozen food. I don't know, maybe the next batch of Hell's Kitchen contestants need to keep an eye on my channel if they want to win the grand prize. Anyway. The 11 seasons that came before him should have been more than enough for Mike to understand it. But with all the preamble I've given it, you can probably guess what happened. When it was time for him to present his dish, Mike served tortellini with tomatoes. When Ramsay asked about the filling, Mike disclosed that it was cheese. And, well, there was more to it. It's a packaged tortellini, fresh tortellini. God, the secondhand embarrassment is real. This revelation alone would have raised eyebrows in any kitchen worth its salt, but the situation somehow took a turn for the worse, since Mike admitted that he used canned tomatoes for the sauce. Uh, they were canned tomatoes. So it's no wonder that Ramsay thought the whole thing was a joke being played at his expense. His whole meal came out of a box. Who does that? You know, you, you're cooking for Chef Ramsay. My thoughts exactly. But Mike's reaction to how Ramsay felt was equally telling. He was offended by the dramatic disposal of his dish. Because at least he hadn't served dog food, right? His words, not mine. What followed was a tense exchange between the two. Mike questioned Ramsay's judgment, prompting Ramsay to call him forward and demands that he repeat that to his face. But I think Mike realized that he was in way over his head since he had absolutely nothing to say for himself, which Ramsey loved. That's bullshit, bro. Who are you? What did you just say? Come on, put your money where your mouth is, Mike. If you got anything to say to me, say it to my face, not my back. You got to shut fuck off. Anyway, while Mike chickened out, his canned tomatoes reminded me of Monique's Mo pasta. During the signature dish challenge in season 14, she was the last person from the red team to have her dish judged. When Ramsay asked her how she made the marinara sauce, she was completely honest, for better or worse. It's just from a jar. And guess what? She argued that Ramsay should have told her not to use pre-made sauce. But for that bit of back talk, and also the dish she served, she walked away with only one point. I don't think there's anything wrong with canned sauce. Unless you're from fucking Italy and you're like born as an Italian, you're not gonna be making your sauce from scratch all the time. Well, that attitude of hers also got her a whopping 14th place. Yeah, one of the first ones to go home to nobody's surprise. Up next, let's discuss Kevin's Chicken Caesar Piadina, a dish that drew Ramsay's attention for all the wrong reasons. Ramsay's initial disapproval stemmed from the very concept of the dish. He expressed his belief that a salad, which shines for being light and fresh, should not be perched on top of a pizza, which you'd want to be hearty and rich. This misalignment had already set the stage for a rocky evaluation, and its presentation really didn't do him any favors, since Ramsay noted that it was uneven as all hell, which left pretty much zero visual appeal. As Ramsay delved deeper into the components of the dish, more and more shortcomings came out of the woodwork. How did you make that dough so quick? Um, it was a uh, prepared dough. But then, something even more crucial was unveiled. Is it an authentic Caesar dressing? pre -made. That's just asking for trouble. Well, moving on. In season 18's Winter Soup Challenge, Brett's choice to incorporate canned tomatoes into his crispy pancetta tomato soup went about as well as you'd expect. It actually left judges Tracy Desjardins and Gordon Ramsay himself visibly shocked. What kind of tomatoes did you use? Uh, canned uh, Palazzo de Pomodoro. The dish was torn apart for its excessive saltiness and the notable absence of any pancetta flavor. In the end, Brett garnered a mere three points. Now, while there is a general consensus that canned tomatoes have an edge over fresh ones, they can sometimes mess with the flavor profile of the dish, which is not something Michelin star restaurants would favor. Were they salted before you started? Um, I cooked them down with salt, Chef. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there tomato puree in there? Uh, a little bit of paste, Chef. Paste, Chef. 
I find it a little salty. Yeah, Ramsey's overt disgust for pre-made or frozen ingredients is well documented. But there's a bit of a thread for me to pull there, since back in 2009, there was a bit of a stir surrounding Gordon Ramsay's culinary empire. The Guardian reported that, in some of his high-profile restaurants and gastropubs in London, pre-prepared food was making its way into the kitchen, getting heated up, and then presented to diners with jaw-dropping markups that sometimes reached a staggering 586%. This revelation left many wondering if Ramsey's commitment to fresh, high-quality ingredients was truly as unwavering as he proclaimed. Take, for example, Foxtrot Oscar and Chelsea, West London. It was revealed that they were using a separate kitchen facility in Wandsworth, South London, to prepare various components of dishes. These components were then transported to the restaurant where they were heated and served to eager customers. When this practice came to light, Gordon Ramsay's spokesperson had to explain that this was indeed happening, albeit with an explanation. Well, this comes from the same man who was in an interview promoting the F word, who declared that using fresh ingredients was the only way to ensure a truly fantastic taste. He even questioned how anyone could overlook the value of fresh food, calling the use of pre-made or packaged food a crime. Now, the apparent contrast between his strong endorsement of fresh ingredients and the use of pre-prepared components in some of his own restaurants raises questions about Ramsay's consistency in upholding his culinary principles. But it's important to note that the use of pre-prepared components is not inherently wrong in the restaurant industry as it can streamline operations. And not every place has to try and be a three Michelin star restaurant. Though I also think it's important that people are at least trying to hold the big shots like Ramsey to practice what they preach. And I'm not the only one, since Chef John Quigley, who owns Glasgow's Red Onion, expressed his own concerns. Quigley believed that the stark contrast between Ramsey's public image and the reality of his restaurant operations was disappointing. Helen Hoken, the then editor for Food & Travel magazine, was less surprised by these revelations. She candidly noted that there appeared to be a growing divide between what Gordon Ramsay professed and what he practiced. Hoken's insights were particularly incisive, as she believed that Ramsay's actions were eroding the trust of his devoted fan base. She pointed out a fundamental issue. Ramsay's focus was shifting away from the very essence of his fame, the food itself. More recently, in 2023, he ventured into the world of ready-made foods available at grocery stores. His brand, known as Buy Chef Ramsay, has exclusively partnered with Walmart to offer a selection of eight convenient meals. These dishes are designed for quick and easy preparation, needing just a few minutes to heat and serve. These are the first of Ramsay's frozen food lineup, and yeah, it feels real weird saying these words together in the same sentence, but here we are. Now, at least he's keeping it close to his heart, since he's offering dishes that range from shepherd's pie to fish and chips. Additionally, he's got a four cheese lasagna, a macaroni bake, a mushroom risotto, a chicken pot pie, and the list goes on. By the way, have any of you tried any of them? Let me know if you have. Meanwhile, people have started questioning that Ramsay has begun to prioritize self-promotion over the authenticity and quality of the dishes that initially propelled him to stardom. And also, the reviews are glaringly bad. It is possible that Ramsey's stance on frozen and canned foods is not a one-size-fits-all condemnation. For example, take a look at this. You can buy haricot beans dried or canned. They are packed with protein and have a lovely soft texture. He made it clear that there are contexts where using canned ingredients like baked beans is perfectly acceptable, especially when preparing food at home. Home cooking has a different set of rules compared to professional restaurant kitchens, let alone high-profile places like some of Ramsay's restaurants. When you're cooking in the comfort of your own kitchen, convenience and practicality are usually much more important than extravagance. Ramsay's criticism of restaurants taking shortcuts is rooted in the idea of transparency and fair pricing. If a restaurant is charging patrons restaurant-level prices for dishes that are predominantly made with packaged ingredients, it's a bit unethical right? Anyway, speaking of banned ingredients, a few other ingredients that shouldn't make the plate are, 
well, the shit sack of a lobster, crab shells, and of course, human hair. On Kitchen Nightmares, Ramsay's the one who has to bear the brunt of the disgusting dishes chefs serve up. But on Hell's Kitchen, if Ramsay doesn't catch something, the customers are the ones who get sent on a one-way trip to the toilet. And this US Marine was served up some of the nastiest stuff ever conceived. So, in episode 3 of season 18, Heather was in charge of the garnish station with Kevin during the Marine Service Challenge. But when Jen started struggling with the salads, Heather stepped in to help. Alright, I'm gonna help you with the salad, so come and shave the farm and I got okay. Heather was low-key wondering how Jen could ever become an executive chef if she couldn't handle something as simple as a salad. And, well, that thought crossed my mind too. But Heather came to a quick realization that she was actually supposed to be working the fryer, not doing Jen's job for her. I'm supposed to be over on the fryer. One of each one. That's, 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 that's it. As if that wasn't enough, when they moved on to the entrees, the meat station was almost ready to go out, but sadly, the fries ran into some issues. There's no fries in the water right now, and we got steak coming up. While Heather was obviously at fault here, she simply couldn't accept any blame whatsoever. There's three other people on that side. Nobody else, apparently, can drop french fries. She blamed the others for not firing up the stations for her. In that sarcastic, thanks, she dropped, when she pointed out that there were three other capable folks who could have done it while she was busy assisting Jen. Absolutely disgusting. Meanwhile, Ramsey was still waiting on Heather for those fries. Ten seconds out, Chef. Heather, I mean, f fries. Just fries. She thought they needed another 20 seconds, but Kevin wanted them out stat. And in a rush to deliver, Kevin didn't bother, you know, checking to make sure they were okay first. I didn't think cooking french fries was that difficult. So, with that context in mind, it shouldn't come as much of a surprise that they landed on the customers' tables undercooked. You take a bite out of you, see? It's like it's not cooked all the center is hard. Marino sent them back to the pass, and Ramsey all but threw those nasty raw potato sticks because, let's be real, those were not fries in the veterans' faces. Look! Look nope. what we're down to. Chef, I apologize. Ramsey made it clear that the rookies were running away with the service. But despite the setback, Heather managed to get the refire accepted. Unfortunately for the veterans, they lost. And Heather was feeling pretty embarrassed about the whole mess. But the worst was still to come. Guess what their punishment was? You remove all the internal, or oh, take off that skin, that membrane. Preparing squid for a calamari dish in the upcoming night's service. And trust me, that's not the easiest thing to do. Have you ever tried it? Let me know in the comments, but I'll buy the frozen pre-sliced stuff any day. And if you're lazy like me, then don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. I know it's a lot of effort, but keeping up with my videos is well worth it. Anyway, it was a tough service for Heather. And trust me, what I've got up next wasn't any easier for this next band of intrepid chefs. And oh, by the way, the shoe was going to be on the other foot as far as the Marines were concerned. Don't get what I mean? Well, stick with me here. In season 15, episode 12, things got spicy during dinner service when Frank was holding down the fish station. Right off the bat, he seemed to have a problem with Danny. I need a solid three minutes to the window. Let's go, oh. me, bro. It was clear he wasn't happy with that poor excuse for communication, especially because of this. It sucks because her ups can make it look like it was my up. Then the snapper saga unfolded. Frank, speed up, let's go. Roll fish. How thick is the fish? Very thick. Frank's snappers that hit the pass were raw because they were cut thicker than the night before. But instead of owning up to it, guess what he did? If I tell you to watch something, just watch it, you know? I mean, don't send it abroad. He blamed Manda for sending them up as is. But wait, there's more. When Ramsey called him out for being slow with the refires, Frank got defensive. Ramsey urged him to bounce back, accusing him of switching off. And let's just say Ramsey wasn't exactly a fan of his reaction. Yeah, we switched off no, now, yeah? Exactly. No, I really have. Well, look at his face! Oh, he was definitely pissed. So much so that it came down to threatening him. Young man, would you like to go home? No, I, I'm good. To add to the chaos, Frank tried to shirk his duties. 
I got two, two snacks right, in the pizza right. oven, thank you. Yeah, because why check your own dish, right? Just offload the responsibility on poor Jared. But don't worry, he saw through the clever game Frank was trying to play. Here we go, Frank just tries to pass the buck. You checking the snapper over there? Well, after some actual teamwork, imagine that, they managed to get the refire accepted. However, fate had other plans. Two of the same snappers hit the table with some issues. The customers were seriously annoyed at how raw their food was. Now, even at his most understanding, Ramsey would be pretty upset, right? But hold on, Ramsey was about to get a whole lot scarier. They're undercooked. Oh, Instead of his usual yelling, Ramsey didn't say a word. Nope, he just tossed the whole dish into the trash. Joe style. And if Ramsey's channeling Joe of all people, you know you messed up. Now, in spite of it all, Frank was still playing that tired old blame game. Because I'm getting by everybody else and I'm dragging now on fish because of them. He was fuming at everyone, claiming they were screwing up his dishes. But let's be real here, they were his dishes. But Jared's strip loin coming out overcooked definitely didn't help, and Frank wasn't having it. At this point, I mean, you need to prove that you could cook steak. Later that night, Frank gave Jared a piece of his mind telling him not to mess up Manda's game by sending his fish up before her garnishes. And Manda chewed him out for it, too. Enough with the attitude! <laughs> God, props to Manda for having the courage to get into a Marine's face when he was in the wrong. That takes some real bravery. Anyway, the blue team had to nominate two for elimination after losing the service. Because, yeah, they lost. During the deliberation, Frank went aggro on Danny. Jared considered Frank for elimination, and when Manda called him out on his attitude, things went downhill. Like, no, look I'm how not looking negative for a you're being. You really just want to round me up. Frank refused to bend backward for his teammates anymore, and claimed she had a ton of attitude that night. And you gotta hear what he called his teammates as he stormed off. They just suck. Now you could talk about me, because I'm walking away. Not exactly a dream teammate, huh? In the end, Frank became the second nominee for the blue team, with Jared being the first. During his plea, he had the audacity to paint himself as a team player, while blaming his teammates for sending out the raw snappers in the same breath. And surprise, surprise, Frank got the boot. Frank's last night because of a popularity contest. The blue team never had any drama. Wasn't really a huge surprise. In his exit interview, Frank believed he got the boot over a popularity contest. Claimed the blue team never had drama until the women joined and made a rather controversial remark about sending female marines back to wherever they came from. Oh wow, and he was a misogynist too. Dude was full of surprises. But Ramsey always gets the last laugh. Unfortunately for him, he's just not ready for the rank of head chef. Now, Ramsey struggled to keep his cool after those snappers were sent back by the customers. But mind you, seeing VIP customers sending back their dishes would send him on a one-way trip to blow up town. And that's exactly what happened in Season 12, Episode 6. So in this particular episode, Ramsey decided it was time for both the teams to appoint a leader for the upcoming service. Anton saw the logic in Ramsey's request and advocated for someone to take charge. He threw his own hat into the ring. Super subtle, dude. Anton, what are you guys? That's how I look at it. I'll take it. We need a strong player. However, Jason wasn't convinced. Anton's just too much of a dick. He thought Anton was too much of a dickhead to be a leader. Can't say the guy wasn't blunt. Anyway, although Jason acknowledged Anton as a strong cook, he hadn't seen an ounce of leadership out of him. On the other hand, Gabriel was enthusiastic about the role. Anton couldn't believe it and burst into laughter, questioning if Gabriel was fucking crazy. Despite Gabriel calling him out on it, Anton kept arguing because I know my abilities. I know I can do this. I do this every day already. Once they returned downstairs, Anton confidently declared himself the men's leader. Yeah, no election, no nothing. Just swooped in and took the role. However, Gabriel wasn't buying it. He's gonna try to lead with his mouth and put his foot in his ass. 
That's what I think. Anton explained that, due to extensive experience, which slightly offended Richard, he would act as a floater. Safe to say, things were gonna get interesting. Especially with Gabriel doubting how well he'd do. During the prep for dinner service, Ramsey took Anton and Melanie aside for a quick 30 second meeting, making it clear that their role as captains had already begun. He overheard the women trash talking them and was not happy about it. The girls are too cocky. Way too cocky. I want to take Melanie down. Yeah, Ramsey wanted to take Melanie down a peg for sure. As dinner service kicked off, Anton started being a floater, just like he'd said. He directed Ralph and Gabriel in making the risottos, hoping that if his team listened to him, they could pull off a strong service. However, he made one thing clear. If somebody's not listening, somebody's not cooperating, I'll throw them out of the kitchen myself. Despite some skepticism from Gabriel and Richard sarcastically calling him Super Chef, the first order of appetizers was accepted, and Anton was pretty pleased with himself. I'm yeah, toot my own fucking horn right now and just jump up and down. Good job, guys. Good job. His leadership appeared to be working as the Blue Kitchen sent out a string of strong dishes. However, that success definitely went to his head, because Anton accidentally did something he shouldn't have. And the blue team is off to a solid start. One order. Hey, 30 seconds. He talked over Ramsey's call out for the next door. Shut the f up. So you sorry, do your Jack. bit, then I wait, then I start, and you fing blur all over it. Yep. Even leaders have to follow the rules in Ramsey's kitchen, self proclaimed leaders especially. Now, when Holly Marie Combs ordered scallops, Anton walked Chris's scallops, but unfortunately, they had a massive issue that they'd overlooked. They're overcooked. They turned out to be overcooked. And Anton pointed the finger at, um, any guesses who? You're making me look bad because you're not doing your job right. Yeah, Chris, without a shred of doubt, too. Because, like, when should the captain ever need to go down with the ship, right? And it wasn't like he was responsible for expediting, right? An hour into service, Anton went back to Chris for the scallops, instructing him to re-sear them on one side. Chris flat out told Anton to shut up. And when Ramsey briefly left the blue kitchen, Anton decided to take matters into his own hands. He skipped Chris's or Ramsey's approval, plated, and served the dishes for the VIP. Any guesses how well that strategy went? Are those undercooked? They are. And well, they wasted no time in escalating the issue to Ramsey himself. Now, as bad as it was that Anton skipped out on Ramsey's final approval, it's worth noting that Chris continuously messing up was a major issue on its own. So, Anton had to pay extra attention to his third attempt at the scallops. And finally, they were accepted. In the end, the blue team managed to win the service, and Anton was praised by Ramsey for it. Not a bad recovery, considering the, well, everything earlier. The red team's troubles definitely worked in the blue team's favor that night. But imagine eating something awful on your own special day. Well, Megan's day was ruined thanks to her special birthday meal, courtesy of Hell's Kitchen. In season 20, episode 6, during Megan's 21st dinner service, Peyton found himself at the meat station with Sam. Things were already off to a horrible start when they served a rare steak on the first ticket, especially because that got Ramsey into a bad mood at the first possible opportunity. Pat, hurry yes, up. Chef. Yes, chef. First table, guys. Jesus Christ. Let's see if they'll ace the refire. It's undercooked. It's raw white fat. Go on, back in the pan. Yes, chef. In spite of all that raw fat, I don't think I've ever seen Ramsey being so patient after a back-to-back -back mess up. But when Megan ordered the pad thai, Peyton was pretty confident. Some noodle dishes before. It's a, it really is a simple concept. However, when the dish reached Megan, all that so-called perfection was nowhere to be found. That is so good. That is no. <laughs> Yours isn't good. Even her friend wasn't impressed. That's terrible. <laughs> This led to that dish making a quick round trip back to the kitchen. Let me take care of this. Yes. Thank you okay. very much. My apologies. And you better believe that Ramsey was going to make them taste it. What was that taste like to you? Nothing. Nothing, Jeff. 
Ramsey demanded to know who seasoned the noodles. Initially, there was silence, until Peyton finally confessed that he cooked the dish. Keanu dropped a hell of an insult when he accused Peyton's brain of being a tangled bundle of noodles. But Marino rubbed salt into his wound when he revealed this. The one in the blue, they say they are fantastic, so go back to your drawing board. <sighs> you love to see it. Despite the rough start, Peyton managed to get his refire accepted. Later in the service, Peyton was among the five chefs responsible for the raw lamb. Yeah, ten whole eyes on it and it was still ruined. And also, yeah, Ramsay was pissed. On my knees because I'm cutting the fat quickly. All of you, get out! Well, there goes the red team. In the aftermath of that disaster, the red team was staring down the barrel of elimination. And Ramsay asked the team to nominate three chefs this time around. Now, this is when something interesting happened. During the deliberation, Bryn threw a bunch of issues in Peyton's face, questioning him about anything and everything. I know what meat feels like when it's done. I do. I'm the one who ran into the past and took it out of the oven. But Josie was pretty honest when she brought this up. And you thought it was good? I thought it was good. But Bryn stayed on the offensive. No. Like, I, I didn't know. Were no, you, no you, but you have to have an answer. Peyton didn't have a single good word in response to the pad thai problem, which Keanu wasn't super happy with, especially since he was responsible for cooking the dish for Megan. Pan, like, it's her birthday. You can't just be putting up scraps. In the end, Peyton found himself named one of the three nominees, alongside Sam and Josie. And boy, was he not happy about it. I'm so angry I'm crying. Like, I'm not crying because I'm upset that I got kicked out. I'm crying because I'm pissed with the steam. Safe to say, not exactly the easiest deliberation the red teams faced. During Peyton's plea to stay, he finally owned up to his mistakes, even acknowledging how bad serving Megan bland noodles was. Chef, I know I made some mistakes, and I feel absolute about it. Despite expressing his growth and determination, he was eliminated. But Ramsey also had a kind word for the guy in the same breath, so it wasn't all bad. And right now, you are not ready to become my head chef. Peyton was disappointed, but he still loved the journey he'd had the chance to go on. But I gave his daughter a entree on her 21st birthday. Honestly, the attitude here is super refreshing. Ramsey had the final word, as usual. He said, Peyton struggled on the blue team and the red team. One thing's for sure, I don't want him on my team. It was a tough end for Peyton, but I can't say he didn't learn a thing or two during his time on the show. But if an Italian consulate sends back a dish, then consider it game over. In season 13, episode 7, during the Italian night dinner service, Ashley was working the fish station. But she was forced to redo her tagliatelle due to Rose Steak coming out blue and she sarcastically thanked her for the extra work. But later, the crazy got kicked up a notch. One dish seems to be leaving the dining room and making its way back to the kitchen. Yeah, I'm not even gonna bury the lead here. The calamari came back from the Italian consulate table for being raw. I'm sure Ramsey will keep his cool about that tiny little mistake, right? R right? Touch that. Raw, yeah, raw. Well, I guess MasterChef Junior Ramsey had left the building. So, bye bye red team. All of you, get out. Just leave me alone, get out. As both teams were named joint losers, they had to come up with two nominees each. Ashley was up for consideration, thanks to Sade and Latasha. And this is why. This is the first bad service that I've had. Well, in her defense, Ashley said, The quarter of a million dollars, I just want to work for Chef Ramsay. She made it clear that it was her first bad service and emphasized that her primary goal in the competition was to work with Ramsay, not just take the 250K and run. Still, the team had a hell of a mountain to climb to find their nominees. On the team. Can I finish talking Go before ahead. you hit? Okay. But if you're going to repeat my words, say it right. But eventually, Ashley became the red team's first nominee with Roe on deck. Aaron and Steve joined them from the blue team. When it was her turn to argue her case, Ashley acknowledged her singular bad dinner service and was appropriately remorseful. I will work fish station every single day to fix my mistakes. She promised to work diligently every single day to rectify it. Unfortunately, her words fell on deaf ears. No second chances for her. Ramsey deemed her mistake at the consulate table 
unacceptable. In her exit interview, Ashley revealed that she didn't expect to be eliminated that night, feeling that others had performed worse than her. Being in the competition was all she wanted, and she just couldn't hold her tears back anymore. I mean, Chef Ramsay obviously just thought that I wasn't good enough. <laughs> but still, Ramsay just thought she didn't have what it took. And, well, I can't say he was wrong. But this next incident could have easily landed the customer, or, well, victim more aptly, in the hospital. In Season 6, Episode 6, uh, what is it with all these Episode 6s, I swear? Wait a minute. Season 12, Episode 6. Season 20, Episode 6. Season 6, Episode 6. 6, 6, 6. What did Hell's Kitchen mean by this? Anyway, during dinner service, Sabrina was struggling real hard on the meat station. When Ramsay asked for the chicken, she claimed to have sent it up already, and was really confident about that assertion. However, it was nowhere to be found at the hot plate or any table, prompting Ramsay to order her to, well, cook a chicken. So they had a chicken to serve, obviously. Then she struggled with carving the chicken and brought Suzanne in to help, who walked her through what should have been a straightforward 30-second job. Despite the assistance, the chicken was still torn to ribbons, and Sabrina blamed it entirely on the person who selflessly tried to help her. But things didn't get any better when a raw pork dish came back to the hot plate. Inedible. Perhaps a little too quickly. This time around, Sabrina actually took responsibility for it. But that didn't make Ramsay much happier. Give me a fucking answer. It's me. Yeah, was it? Oh. Oh. However, the real blunder here happened a little later. Raw lamb. Sabrina claimed that it was cooked medium well when she sent it out, so she came to the obvious conclusion that the customers were somehow in the wrong. But Ramsay saw the lie, or just plain stupidity maybe, for what it was. Both teams lost, and Ramsay was particularly upset at Sabrina for having the gall to blame the customers. Each team had to nominate one person for elimination, and if you didn't think Sabrina was gonna get nominated, I don't know what to tell ya. She joined Andy from the blue team, but managed to secure another chance in the competition. But honestly, Andy was completely robbed. Well, I never want to eat anything ever again. Why don't you make my life easier and just f*** off home? There's 23 on board, Chef. So what? Why are you cooking them now? What's the matter with you, madam? Half the dining room have got their entrees. You're half are standing staring. What this contestant did ended up being the most spectacular failure to have ever happened on the show. And that's just one of the times when chefs ruined dinner service on HK. So what happened is, in the sixth dinner service of season two, Virginia was in charge of the fish station, and she had peppered seared bluefin hamachi sashimi on the menu. Whew, that was a mouthful. Either way, it was a big task that she definitely wasn't up for. And at one point, she made the critical error of sending out raw scallops. I'm not gonna listen to your bullshit to send that crap. That's f***ing raw. Quick aside, I want you guys to count how many times contestants screw up scallops in this video. Let me know how many times it happens in the comments once you get to the end. Anyway, Sarah offered to lend a hand, but Virginia was in no mood to accept it. Just let it go. Just let it be. It's okay, I got it. As a result, Virginia's mistakes and inconsistent timing with the sashimi had a devastating knock-on effect on the red kitchen. I need to Sorry? collect my thoughts before I answer you, chef. Yikes. And to make matters worse, Virginia began complaining instead of admitting that she was way out of her depth. I was having trouble cutting the sashimi this evening because the sashimi was just too wiggly and it, it got a little difficult. Ramsay didn't even know where to begin between the unevenly thick slices and how she had messed up something as basic as this. That's all it is. It's raw fish f***ing sliced. We still can't get that out. See, even the editors called her BS out. In an effort to salvage the situation, Ramsay sent Maribel to assist Virginia. By that point, it was an hour into service and the situation had beyond spiraled out of control. Her performance during the final four service was even more of a train wreck. Virginia's guaranteed spot in the final three might have given her a sense of security, but during the dinner service, she abused the hell out of that privilege. She was assigned to the garnish station and was responsible for serving a crab amuse-bouche to every table. When Ramsay called out a six cover, Virginia was spacing out. 
Essentially doing nothing. Six covers, table 30. Yes, there you chef. go. Standing fucking staring at me. We stopped shopping now, missus. Let's go. Yes, chef. And, well, it didn't stop there. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Come on, move your fucking ass. Yes, chef. That was the beginning of her downfall. Sometime later, she couldn't find her green beans, which held up Heather's entrees. Hey, who are you talking to? Myself. Good. You know, nobody talks about this moment, but I think it's up there with the funniest moments on the show. Definitely an underrated gem for sure. Anyway, when she explained to Ramsey that she was trying to move quickly in spite of the chaos, Ramsey wasn't buying it. Watch her for two minutes. Yes, chef. That's fast. I'm ready. Can you please go? Yes. Virginia, Wellingtons are being served. Virginia's problems continued as she failed to understand Heather when she called out a ticket, forcing her to repeat it. One Wellington. Two Wellington. Two Wellington, Virginia. Two yes, Wellington. Two Wellington. To add to the drama, a minor fire broke out at her station prompting Heather to step in and help her, even going to the back store to look for bok choy. Oh my god, not in front of the chef. Heather, do me a favor, go around to the garage and get whatever she hasn't got. There you go. Yeah, where's the bok choy? Later on, Virginia ran out of cream and asked Keith to fetch some for her like he was some kind of errand boy. Cream, please, as fast as you can. No. When Ramsey asked if her panic was because of her immunity, she flat out denied it. Hey, Missy, is this because you're safe? No, chef. It is, isn't it? No, chef. Okay, so in that case, why was Heather running her station? Anyway, when Jean-Philippe returned with the chef's dishes, he told Heather that the meat was perfectly cooked, but the peas were, um, burnt. Why do they have to be so harsh? Harsh, harsh, harsh. Answer her, people! As the service continued, Virginia told Ramsey to slow down as she couldn't keep up. Oh, my God. Either somebody God. help me or just slow it down, please. It was like she was trying to sabotage her team. To make things worse, she admitted to burning the cabbage, forcing Heather to return her meat. Heather! Yes, chef. She's burnt the cabbage. I just burnt the cabbage. Take your meat back! By this point, Ramsay had enough of her nonsense. Hey, Missy. Yes, chef. You're no longer safe. Yeah, he revoked her immunity. But I mean, why go through all that trouble if she wasn't eliminated that night, though? But Keith wasn't going to be quiet about it. He called out Ramsey for his favoritism towards Virginia. I personally think that you have a hard on for Virginia. Ooh, gotta respect the balls on this dude. But he's not alone. Take a look at what this viewer had to say. He wrote, You can tell Chef Ramsey has a soft spot for pretty girls if you watch him a lot. He makes a lot of decisions that don't seem to make sense, and it does frequently happen with pretty girls. Do you guys see it? I'm not entirely sure, so get in the comments and let me know. Meanwhile, let's check in on the winner of Hell's Kitchen Season 9. Now, Paul had a good run throughout the show, but his performance during the 20-year reunion dinner service was the absolute worst. Now, mind you, this was the first of its kind on Hell's Kitchen. That was one of the worst dinner services I've ever witnessed. And Paul decided to kick things off with a bang by messing it up. So our man here was in charge of the fish station, and things didn't go to plan. When they got their first order, Paul was feeling pretty confident. I really feel like tonight, the blue team, we're gonna knock it out the park. I mean, we got this menu down, it's our dishes, we're gonna take it in service tonight. Stay focused, let's go. Oh boy, spoke too soon, my man. First, he sent out a raw snapper on the very first order of entrees. This got under Ramsey's skin because he wasn't expecting such a basic mistake out of such a great chef. I don't expect that from you. It's a first take. Although Paul owned up to it, the damage was done. To make matters worse, Paul was slow in getting the snapper ready, and when he finally sent it out, it was still... Raw. It's the second time! Ramsey was fuming because that snapper was supposed to go to an important table. But by that point, Ramsey came up with a solution. Jonathan, Monterey, on the fish! However, things didn't get any better. Even after Paul was taken off the station, Monterey served up another raw snapper. But that didn't stop Ramsey from blaming Paul for messing things up from the very beginning. As a result, the blue team was kicked out of the kitchen, and they lost. Get out! Shocker. In the end, the blue team had to pick two people to be nominated for elimination, and it's safe to say that Paul's performance was a big factor in their defeat. 
You backed up the entire dining room. I know, Chef. I had the worst service of my life. But despite all the setbacks, Paul redeemed himself, learned from his mistakes, and walked away with the whole competition. But what happened in this service was about to land one contestant in hot water. Six. Oh, oh three, three, nine. Let that set the tone for what's to come. You see, you're right from the moment Melissa took charge of the meat station, things started heading downhill. About 30 minutes into the service, she brought out a bunch of cooked filet mignons. However, it didn't sit well with Ramsay, because the red team had only managed to serve appetizers to three tables at that point, and had yet to even start on entrees. So Ramsay asked what needed to be asked. Why don't you make my life easier and just fuck off home? To make matters worse, he counted all the beef on her tray, and guess what he discovered? There's 23 on board, chef. So what? Why are you cooking them now? Ooh. Oh boy, 23 filets overcooked and wasted. To put that into perspective, let's say a restaurant sold each steak at 50 bucks. That's well over a thousand dollars that she pissed away. See, math isn't so hard. Anyway, things escalated as Ramsey was beyond exasperated at having to constantly instruct Melissa during every service. I can't do it anymore with you. You need a system. There's no system. Later in the evening, Melissa sliced into some beef. That turned out to be raw. She tried to salvage it by putting it back in the oven, but the damage was done. Melissa. Yes, chef. If the steaks aren't cooked, don't slice them. Rule number one. This is slice them. Oh man, he was almost on the verge of tears. I was seriously surprised that she wasn't ejected mid-service or eliminated outright. What's more is that she somehow managed to survive the official elimination that night. Ramsey should have just taken the opportunity to send her packing because her performance in the next service was even more pathetic. Right from the start, her scallops were a disaster. Her first attempt at sending them out for Rob's salad resulted in an undercooked mess. Downright raw, actually. Small scallop, and look at this one here, look. Oh, shit. Raw. Oh, 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 shit. This is your salad. It's raw. It was Melissa who deserved to be on the receiving end of that. Her second try wasn't any better. This time, the scallops were burnt to a crisp. Talk about overcorrecting. As the service went on, she made yet another futile attempt to refire the scallops. Regrettably, Rob rejected them, this time claiming they were overcooked. Hey, at least she was getting closer. They were terrible, so I refused to put them out. But did Melissa take any responsibility? Nope. She was convinced that her scallops had to be perfect, at least one of them. I'm sorry, what the f It's you! You are the problem! Oh, and the culmination of her ineptitude came when she revealed that she had completely run out of scallops. The shocking truth was that she had managed to ruin a whopping seven pounds of scallops in total. Take the plate. Take the fucking plate. Pass it around. I am not even gonna try and do the math on that one. Anyway, her complete lack of control over her station was not only an embarrassment, but a disgrace. And because of it, the blue team was forced into an embarrassing last minute change, substituting the scallop salad with a rock shrimp dish. Her inability to execute her role properly not only disrupted the entire service, but also exposed her as a serious liability. Why can't you be honest with me? I struggle a lot, chef. Huh? Fuck me. You know, I wouldn't bat an eye if Ramsey wanted to sue her for damages for all the food waste she was responsible for. But Tech's performance in the welcome home dinner service will make Melissa look like the queen of the kitchen. So, she was handling the meat station. Tennille, trying to offer some advice, stepped in to help her with the first order of entrees. However, Tech didn't take too kindly to it. It's in there in the convection. How long? Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Start cooking all those meats. Cook it, cook it, cook it, dude. Make sure this side doesn't get burnt. Tech steaks turned out to be way too undercooked. Blue is blue. Oh, if only she had listened to Tennille, right? She then complained that the grill didn't have enough hot spots to cook them properly. When she finally brought the steaks to the pass, though... What's the matter with you, madam? Half the dining room have got their entrees! You're half are standing staring! Burnt. Suzanne tried to lend a hand on the grill, but Tech seemed more annoyed than appreciative, making it tough for her to focus. When there's nine people, like, yelling and grabbing things, you know, it's 
hard to maintain your focus. It's just frustrating. As time passed, the red team was still stuck on their first entree, and Ramsey asked Tech if they could at least get a burger out. To everyone's surprise, she confessed that she had just put a burger on the grill, which, uh, wasn't the answer he was looking for. Has the cheeseburger just gone on? Yes, Chef. Oh. Oh. Feeling the pressure, Ramsey took Tech to the pantry, where he urged her to bounce back and get her act together. What are you doing? You're not even with me! Yes, I am, Chef. I didn't hear the burger order. I'm sorry. Send it out! Right, Chef. I will get it Hurry right up. now. Thank you, Chef. Eventually, she managed to cook the steaks properly, but there was another hiccup due to a mistake by Amanda. This led to Ramsey calling in the blue team to bail them out. I know how to cook. I'm not a fucking dumbass. Yeah, they needed all the help they could get and more. But here comes the self-proclaimed queen of HK. I'm still the same Lise who really doesn't care what people think. It's okay. You can hate me. During the Five Chefs Black Jacket service of season 9, she was in charge of the fish station, and let me tell you, it was far from smooth sailing. She was determined to show Ramsay that she could cook salmon, especially after the previous challenge. I sliced it to show the middle because I think it was pretty. Pretty, it looks like a dog's chewed it. Mm. But her first attempt ended in disaster, as the salmon turned out burnt on the bottom, which forced Ramsey to send out an incomplete table. When she tried to refire, the skin was soggy this time around. Soggy, they're cooking on the bottom, not the skin! Paul tried to give her a simple tip, cook the skin side first, which is pretty much cooking 101. Even I know that, and I'm just some dude on the internet. But Elise didn't want to hear it. Thank should have told me that 20 minutes ago. Paul's efforts to assist, she was forced to start over after the skin broke. Ramsey berated her for turning a $30 dish into a $0 dish and pointed out that they had been dragging for 14 minutes. Why is it not cooking on the skin? I guess I thought I was gonna burn it. It's what? not gonna burn. Finally, she seemed to grasp the message that Ramsey and Paul were trying to convey. Okay. Congratulations, you just said what I've been saying for the last Hour. I'll get it. Ramsey sarcastically told her to relax because their next ticket was all meat. But the problems didn't end there. Tommy tried to help, which she obviously didn't want, and they ended up in a heated argument. I got you're you're on medium. Right you're on medium heat right now. Turn it up. You're searing Tommy. When Ramsey asked her about the salmon refires, she explained that she had to restart due to the skin sticking to the pan. Ramsey was left confused. Watch it throw a tantrum now. I'm not, chef. I've sent half the table. I'm gonna get it together, chef. But the final blow came when Tommy noticed that her flat top wasn't hot enough for the fish. It's not heating hot enough. You gotta put it Tommy, up hot. Tommy, I can't do that. Go, you gotta get out my face. Yeah, you go, Elise. That's how teams work. The salmon she eventually sent out came out raw. And that was the last straw for Ramsey. I'm done. Leave me alone. All of you, f*** out of here. All of you. The fact that Will backstabbed Jennifer and somehow she was eliminated over Elise is mind-boggling. I think Elise is a stronger cook than Jennifer. Are you serious? And what happened next was even crazier. Jennifer, chef. You are I'm kidding me. I'm, just, I'm being honest. You know what? You better hope I go home. Like, really? I guess they clearly wanted the stronger competitor gone, and besides, producers love drama, and Elise had it in spades. But this next contestant, who had a very short tenure on the show, was trouble right from the start. When it came to the appetizers, Polly needed assistance from Rachel, Maribel, and even sous chef Marianne just to keep things moving. Her first risotto was a disaster, overcooked, stuck to the plate, and missing key ingredients, such as the mushrooms. Are you happy to send that? No, sir, I'm not. Get it in the bin and start again. Yes, sir. When Ramsey called for time on the refire, Polly said it would take six minutes. However, Sarah chimed in, saying she could do it in two, which didn't really help. He demanded to know who was running the appetizers, and Polly claimed responsibility. She forcefully pushed Sarah off the station, which went about as well as you'd expect. Six Who's minutes, running the chef. section? I'm running it. Well, Six tell her minutes. then. Let's go. I'm running it. It's not going to be two minutes. Okay. Polly finally sent her refire to the pass. Ramsey asked her to taste it. I think it's bland. You think it's bland? Oh, man. Why are you serving me bland food? Take it back and start again. All right. By the time an hour and a half had passed, 
Polly was on her fourth attempt at the first risotto. Ramsey had given her enough chances, and he was done. We have served f***ing zero. Yes, chef. I've put more food in the bin tonight than I've ever seen in 10 years. She was eliminated that night for her inexperience. Shocking nobody, I'm sure. Next, we have Ray from season 11. When the first ticket was called, Dan asked Ray about the number of scallop orders, but Ray seemed irritated by it. Can I cook? Can you let me cook? Can I, can I try? Can I be in the limelight? <laughs> no. His first attempt at scallops was a complete flop. Yeah, no way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Rubber. Rubber. Get the pan f***ing hot. Yes, sir. Ray had to start over, and his second attempt was luckily acceptable but as they moved on to the entrees the situation didn't improve ray took total control of the fish station and didn't allow dan to do anything well you got to be a little bit more organized Excuse me, man. yep tell me when you're reaching in front of me you gotta tell me when you're reaching right the tension between the two of them was at an all-time high and their constant arguments annoyed everyone Who's better than you? Right, you gotta give yep. me some space, man. I can't work throwing elbows at you. Unnecessary much? And Ramsey had to step in to put out the fire. I don't know what the f*** you two are doing down there. Fine. How long? All right, we're coming to the pass. Let's go then! Then came the moment that was probably the last draw for Ramsey and the blue team. Ray brought a bass to the pass. Ooh, unintentional rhyme. Only to realize that it was supposed to be halibut. And the blue team had to start the table all over again. Three f***ing halibuts! That's what we're going with. He doesn't even f***ing know. Oh my god. Ramsey couldn't help but come up with the most fitting epithet for them. Hey, dumber and dumber. Yes, yes chef. chef. But that wasn't the end of it. Oh no. When Barrett entered the kitchen, Ray said he needed two minutes for the halibut. But when Ramsey asked for the final time, he, well, had a lot to say. Before with the fish station, I had a hiccup, but don't worry, I have it. Spoiler alert, he didn't have it. Just touch. Just dry. Overcooked. Dry. Ramsey berated Ray and Dan for making him wait so long, only to be served a subpar dish. Accusations of sabotage flew, and Ray and Dan had to start over once again. I've honestly lost track of all the mistakes by this point. Anyway, on his third attempt of the same order of halibut, Ray crumbled under the pressure, and it turned out wrong. I have a big f***ing problem. Yes, I do! Man, this is wrong! And it was painful to see how Ramsey reacted. You, 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 get out! Zack was right. Titanic got no shit on you guys. But this next contestant suffered a near-lethal finger cut that threw the entire service out of whack. I want a black jacket like a fat kid wants cake. Meet the brave boy Jared Bobkin. I will literally sell my mother for a black jacket. Jared was confident because fish was his specialty. Normal cooks are here, my level's up here, but then with fish, it's even higher. But he was so grossly wrong. His first try with scallops was a complete disaster. Raw scallops in the middle there. That one's raw. Even when he got his second chance, the refire was accepted, but his lobster tail came out super slow and ended up being cold. Hello. No, that's cold. Yeah, that's, that's cold. Like to make matters worse, Jared then sent up a burnt snapper, which forced Ramsey to send out an incomplete table for Randy Couture. Dressed too much trip. I've got to serve something. Otherwise, no one's getting fed. It was a mess. And even on his second attempt, the fish was still raw. Ramsey had to give him a serious wake-up call before finally accepting the third attempt. My jaw's on the floor. I cannot quite believe what I'm experiencing. It's raw. On the final ticket, his char was still raw. It got so bad that Ramsey had to step in and cook the final ticket himself. Hey, all of you, all of you, come here a minute. Just go over to the chef table. Just do one little thing. Just apologize. I'll cook the last table. Oh, my God. Honestly, though, Jared kind of creeped me out. There's no foreplay with this. You just slide it in there. Nice analogy, but please never use it again. I mean, this dude had a knack for making everything sound weirdly sexual. And he didn't even spare his own sister. Chef Ramsay, please say this is right. Uh, okay, I think we're done with Jared now. And, oh, the rest of the video, too.
So, who do you think was the worst of them all? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you have any interesting video suggestions, I'm all ears. I'm committed to bringing you only the best content. And all you have to do in return is hit that like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. And if you want to keep the fun going, make sure to join and become a member using the tab right here. And trust me, if you thought this video was crazy, this next one is even better.